Major support for these programs is provided by Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and Perfect Building Maintenance, New York Community Bank, Kilroy Architectural Windows, New York's window company, Greenberg Traurig, LLP, m and Bank, Chase Commercial Term Lending. Additional support is provided by AVR Realty Company, LLC, Bingham McCutcheon, LLP, Briarwood Organization, Bruce Mosler, Capital One Bank, Cassidy Turley, C.B. Richard Ellis, Chelsea Lighting, Cushman and Wakefield, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Douglaston Development, DDG Partners, Hal Fetner, Durst Fetner Residential, Friedman LLP, Accountants and Advisors, Gemini Real Estate Advisors, LLC, Genova Burns and Gian Tomasi, Investors Bank, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Center at Syracuse University, Corman Communities, Madison Realty Capital, Margolin Weiner and Evans, LLP, Certified Public Accountants and Business Advisors, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Meridian Capital Group, Newmark Knight Frank, Site Comply, Sterling and Sterling, SJP Properties, Stonehenge Partners, The Wickoff Group, Urban American, and Ackman Ziff Real Estate, Aerial Property Advisors, Eastern Consolidated, Essex Capital Partners, Goldman Properties, Moynian Group, Must Development, RAL Development Services, The Spandrel Group, LLC, Rosewood Realty Group, Triangle Equities. So in New York City, you have developments. You have apartment buildings, you have office buildings, you have hospital buildings, and you even have these great retail developments. And today I have a man who's been responsible for many of them, Joel Pickett, who's the chairman and CEO of Gotham Organization. Nice to see you today. Nice to see you, Mike. So the real roots of Gotham go back to your grandfather, right? Correct. Tell me a little bit about him. Well, my grandfather came over from Europe in what's generally known as Ukraine, although you get lost in the geography a little time in those days. And uh, he came over and he started working as a contractor. And uh, then he went into building for his own account, probably in the early 20s. And uh, some of the things he did were the wedding, some of the old wedding, the wedding cake. cake. Yeah, the old wedding cake. Right, there was one on like 3rd Avenue, you told me? 3rd Avenue on the uh, northwest corner of 45th Street, yeah. And uh, he did that and several others. And he did some contracting jobs like the original post office in Brooklyn on Tillery Street. And then your father joined him in like 1931, right? Yeah. Uh, my father uh, was a uh, graduate civil engineer from NYU. And he got out of school just about that time. And of course, that was the Depression. And from what I learned through the years at that point, they had a tough time holding on to the buildings they had. And they basically went into the general construction business. So they left the building. Now, you grew up in Manhattan. I did. You, you, I think you even said to me you were born in uh, Doctor's Hospital? Born in Doctor's Hospital. Right. Yeah. And the interesting thing, the real reason is because Doctor's Hospital subsequently became part of the... Uh, Cat became part of uh, Beth Israel Beth, Medical Beth Center. Beth Israel Medical Center, where you have been involved with so many years. Correct. The continuum service. Now, you went to Horace Mann. I did. And then you went to Cornell. Right. And then you joined the business. Well, you I... Know, you, were going to, you were going to NYU Law School, correct? Uh, no, night, no, no, no. I, I was going to NYU Business School at night, and uh, I just gotten out of college and got married, and I was working for my father up in the Bronx during the uh, days and going to school at night, and my father passed away while that was going on. Right. Yeah. And, and, and at that time, basically, you know, Gotham was doing some business. So you really took over and recapitalized Gotham when your father passed on, right? With a little help. Right. I, I didn't no. have the capital. So no, 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 but help. it was yeah. a recapitalization right. and really took a, an entity. But that's why, we, you know, we're saying that the, the, the Gotham goes back all the Oh, yeah, years, yeah. Uh, it, was, it was the same company, and I 
I took it over and reconstituted it. Right. Now, at the beginning, you said a, a good amount of your business came out of the healthcare world. Right? Correct. How'd that happen? Well, what happened is when my father died, I wasn't too sure whether I wanted to continue it and gave it a chance and had a few people that, uh, that actually helped me out. And we were kind of doing two things at the time. One was some apartment buildings uh, and the other was hospital work. My father did a lot of hospital work for a number of the well-known institutions. And we were doing uh, some small work at uh, what was then Bethel Hospital in, in Brooklyn. And uh, I was fortunate to meet one of the great benefactors there, a gentleman by the name of Arnold Schwartz. And uh, he took a like to a young fella, and we, we started doing some work there. And one of them turned out to be a, uh, a $16 million project in 1967 dollars, which is astonishing to think, but probably in today's world would be about a $600 million job. And that was the building of the new hospital? That was the building of the new hospital, that what then became Brookdale Hospital. You know. So that was quite interesting at such a young age. Now, I think it was, you said, I think when your father was alive, they were, the family or Gotham was involved with the uh, development of like synagogues also at that time. Yeah. Forest Hill Synagogue? Yeah, my father did uh, a number of synagogues. Uh, Forest Hills was one of them. And when he died, we were actually building Temple Israel on 75th Street and Park Avenue. Now, you said to me, uh, so at this time, you were, what, 24 when your father died? I was 22 when my father died. So 22, and you take over the, the, the business at that time. Now, another... A little more complicated than that, but yeah. Yeah, but there were right. a lot of the, the other situation was, at that time, there was a lot of development of what we... The pre mitchell Lama or the mitchell Lama before. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Well, actually, when my father died, I was uh, snapping lines on a floor, laying out petitions for... Uh, a developer, we were building a Mitchell Lama for up in Bronx Park. And uh, when we did a few of those, I kind of said, gee, this is a way to get into the development business because it didn't really require much capital. And it was really a builder's program. The big risk was, uh, was building them and completing them, which we m normally do as a contractor anyway. And the financing was available and the marketplace was, was a given because the, the rental numbers were you know, consigned to moderate income people and they were easily marketable. So which Mitchell Lama developments were you involved with? The oh, uh, a number of them. Uh, we, we did um, Seaview Towers out in uh, Far Rockaway, Hudson View Terrace on uh, 52nd Street and 10th Avenue, um, Mayflower Terrace up in the Bronx. We probably did about five or six of them. And uh, then the Mitchell Lama program faded out, as you know. And, and then subsequently, you also, when did you get involved with the conversions? You started with the conversions of buildings. That was kind of in the uh, late 70s. The J-51 program was around in, in, in the city, and there were a couple of good opportunities. So we, we did uh, uh, one at 244 Madison Avenue. We converted an office building into an apartment building. We did another one at 808 Broadway. Uh, we Is that the Renwick? The Renwick, right. Yeah, that was an interesting job. It was a conversion and a new building. And then we did, um, converted the old St. John's Law School building out in Skirmahorn Street in Brooklyn into apartments. And uh, we did those for a while. And um, mostly converted them to condos in, after a short period of time. Now, you, you said, I think it was in the, um, was it the 70s or 80s you got involved with Integrated? It did. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, Integrated Resources, if, as you remember, I don't know how many people do, was, was a, um, a financial services company which got involved in a number of different projects. And, and one of the things they were interested in doing was, was housing. And we actually did a few uh, housing jobs for them. They bought a couple of uh, projects we were building. Uh, they became general partner, and we stayed in the deal as for building them and, and, as, and as partners. And then we decided to form a partnership to do it. And we were working on a couple of deals. We did a project up on Madison Avenue and I think 112th Street called Los Trace Unidos. And then uh, that program broke down a little and of course integrated, ultimately went bankrupt. And, and another interesting story is during this time period, uh, we, they bought uh, the office 
portion of uh, Zeckendorf Towers. Zeckendorf Towers down on Union Square, and uh, we built that for them. We did the fit out, and then uh, again when they went under, there was an opportunity for Beth Israel Medical Center to buy that space, which we did. Speaking about Beth Israel, how did you get involved um, with Beth Israel? I mean, this this real you know this passion relationship with Beth Israel goes back how many years? Would you say it goes back? Um, I think it goes back uh, about probably close to 30 years. And how did that happen? Um, well, as a result of my working at hospitals in the contracting business, um, I kind of was really mesmerized by them in the sense that they really are whole cities in terms of the services they provide from, uh, you know, obviously what they do for people, but includes food service and a whole bunch of things. And they're really complicated things to run, and they always interested me. And I said, uh, you know, one day I'd like to be on a board. And it just so happened a couple of people on the board approached me at uh, Beth Israel, and I said, okay. And I went on, and I've been very active there since. Now, uh, be so, okay, from the, you were active in the merger? Or the, yeah, the creation? yeah, I was one of the original board members of Continuum when we merged with St. Luke's Roosevelt. And what was the reasoning for the merger at that time? I mean, it was everybody was merging at that time. Uh, yeah, you know, and some, well, this one worked, and I, I, th I think the biggest reason was that uh, you know, again, healthcare was becoming so complicated that uh, putting things together and purchasing, uh, and the, you know, if you were bigger, you had a better position in in the healthcare world, um, and it's it's a tough thing to to try to put that together. In fact, I think took us a number of years to really meld a lot of the services there. It doesn't happen overnight. Now, now the interesting thing on, on Gotham is the Gotham organization, but there's Gotham construction Correct. and Gotham development. Right. What, when did you really go more into the development from the construction side? Because when you when you went to the company, you know, at 22, yeah. that was you were really in the construction Correct. business. Correct. We were solely in the you construction, were construction business. Construction yeah, my, business. my father, I guess, was a... Uh, victim of what happened in the depression and, and uh, felt safer in the construction business so he, he didn't do many equity things and as I mentioned uh, we um, I, w I was fortunate enough to be involved in an early Mitchell arm and saw that it was really a builders kind of program and that we could uh, merge uh, a building practice with a construction practice so here I was uh, early on being a very large contractor as a result of even that one project we mentioned before and uh, I decided that it made sense to do both. So we, we did work for ourselves and we did work for other people. And then when my son got in the business um, in, the, in the 90s, um, he said that he liked development better. In fact, he's commented me many times he doesn't understand why we do build for other people, but, but I enjoy it. And uh, he decided he wanted to really c focus on the development business. So the way we have our company set up now, he really runs the development end of the business and uh, have another gentleman running the construction, John Giamarella runs the construction end of the business. Now with regard to the, the, the development business, Mitchell Lama was one program. When did you get involved with the 80-20 program, which is so important today oh, also? Well, I mean, I, I've been through them all. I mean, we, we, Mitchell Lama, uh, we, we did a lot of FHA stuff. And the 80-20 program, I did my first 80-20s in the mid-80s. Um, they were um, basically up on the Upper West Side. When uh, they had the West Side redevelopment. West Side Urban Renewal, and they went through 10 plans. In fact, one of them we did on the Upper West Side, we actually got involved with in the mid-60s and finally built in the mid-80s. And so we did some of the original 80-20 jobs. Uh, and again, we built them for others as well as ourselves. And um, it, it's been a good program for us and for the city, I think. Now, let's talk about Harlem, USA. Right. Because there was, you know, the, the biggest problem for people who live north of 96th Street was retail. There Correct. Was, there was no retail right. whatsoever. I right. Mean, until the, the path mark was really built in the late 80s, there hadn't been a new supermarket in Harlem in Correct. 50 years. You and, and Drew, and you, you create, what was it, in the 90s? In the 90s, yeah. Uh, we, uh, Drew Greenwald actually came to me and said, would you be interested in, in uh, developing retail for underserved areas? And our first reaction was that uh, it's kind of a crazy idea. And uh, 
that's when my son David actually came in the business and we talked for a while and we said, you know, this, this really, he's right. You know, this is an underserved area and it has great potential. And uh, the first site we worked on was Harlem, USA, which now, is... Now, what was there? I mean, this is, you know, this, as we, when you and I got together, and I've always said this, there, yeah. are, three, there are three Harlems. People don't realize that there's West Harlem, there's Central Harlem, and East Harlem. Right. And, and probably the best for retail business and probably even for development is West Harlem. Correct. Uh, but at this time, uh, in the 90s, Nothing was happening no, was, in any was, part of no, it. No, nothing was happening. There, was, there wasn't much up there. There's some ramshackle buildings. Um, and uh, we just decided it had, demographics were incredible. It, it had uh, enormous population, some of whom uh, made more money than you would think. And that it was a good time to, to, to do this. And uh, we worked on it for, I guess about six, seven years before we could do one. This was basically one square block. It was. It is. You know, on 125th yeah. Street yeah. over there, yeah. Yeah. And, and so you, it was a lease, correct? It, it, we have a long-term lease with uh, the Harlem Commonwealth uh, Development Corporation, which owned a lot of property along along the street, and uh, it's a 99-year lease. Uh, we, um, it's about 250,000 square foot project. All the entrances are off the street and uh, we worked a long time on it and then we finally got Disney store. Right. The, the real key, you know, is right. a, as many people say, the, the key to the 42nd Street redevelopment was when Disney took yeah. the store yeah. in Times Square right. and when Disney took the store in Harlem, USA, that was one of yeah. the... Yeah, we, we were then able to get a, uh, that was the beginning of getting into critical mass so that we could, we could start the project and then we wound up with uh, Lowy's, which Magic Johnson Theaters with a nineplex, and then the rest of it came along. And then, of course, the yeah. good thing that happened is that Disney decided to close their stores because they had a very cheap lease, <laughs> and we were able to get better income out of the spot. So who's there now? Uh, TD Bank. So you have TD Bank. You also still have Chase over there? Chase is there. And then you have the Health Club. Health Club. Uh, Lodell's. Lodell's, yeah. Yeah. So that, that was one of, one of the situations. Yeah. But you also were involved with the redevelopment because for many years there were no new buildings. I mean, Correct. you were involved with the Cornerstone program. In yeah, yeah, also. yeah, yeah. We did a couple of properties up at 145th Street in the Bradhurst right. area. The Bradhurst area, right. the Hamilton. The Hamilton and the Langston. Right, a lot of affordable co-ops, which was a very Correct. big, important need. How did the, then, then I think it was Dave and you found... Uh, the new Gotham was it? Uh, was it on Forty yeah. Second? Yeah, yeah. That was a, well, a foreclosure of a land yeah, bank loan. Yeah, yeah. Actually, David had been with me a few years, and in the nineties, you know, nobody was doing very much, and I think he was getting a little itchy. And uh, this particular property came around, and boy, was the land cheap. But if you go back to then, no land seemed cheap enough. Nobody was doing anything. And right. This just was Forty Second Street or uh, yeah, off Eleventh Avenue, Forty Third to Forty Second Street, and and uh, we said, okay, let, let's buy it, and we bought it and we sat with it for a few years and then finally you know the bank started lending some money and we were able to develop it. Speaking of uh, long terms and big development, you have a new project right? Yes. This, this other square block. Yeah it's a big project. Okay let's talk about that. That's Gotham West? It's called Gotham West. It's uh, 1240 apartments. Uh, it's between 44th and 45th Street and 10th to 11th Avenue. And we're actually uh, putting up one 31-story building, which is an 80-20. Uh, and then uh, that has about 680 families in it. And then we are uh, back toward the uh, 10th Avenue where um, we have a couple of affordable buildings, actually three. Little lower rise? They're 14-story buildings, yeah. And uh, it's moving along. We're in the superstructure. Now, is that reta any retail over there? There's about 15,000 square feet of retail. Now, was that originally supposed to be studios? It was supposed to be movie studios, yeah. Right. And uh, I guess the city, when they did Hudson Yards, didn't want movie studios there. And the community wanted housing, and the deal was cut. Now, what about the Atlas? I mean, uh, how did that come about on 6th Avenue? The Atlas is a, uh, we, we have our offices there, and it's a 37-story um, apartment building. 400 apartments above it, and uh, we just assembled it back in the late 90s and uh, finished it in 2002, I think. What about um, 
one of the nicest buildings which has been built in the last couple of years is the building called The Corner. The Corner. 200 West 72nd Correct. Street. Everybody, you know, no one could forget The right. Corner because it is The Corner is over the corner. there. <clears throat> you got a Trader Joe's, which is always busy right, over there. Right. You got great retail. Tell me about that. Well, uh, our partners there uh, own the land, and uh, we we came in and uh, uh, thought we could enhance the value by keeping the retail and also building apartments of, over it, which we did. And uh, it, it really turned out to be a well-designed building, and uh, uh, we were really even pleasantly surprised by the view lines because the building like sits right over Broadway, and uh, it's 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 really. It's really quite a nice building, and we finished that about two years ago, I guess, at this point. Now, you said to me you did also, you, uh, there, there's, it's not Harlem, USA, but there's Washington, USA, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we did a uh, really a similar development, except it's larger. It's uh, close to, it's over 500,000 square feet plus the same amount of parking. And uh, we did that in Washington and the Columbia, D.C. and the Columbia Heights area. Another urban area. Another underserved urban area, uh, very close to transportation. And uh, we finished that about three years ago, and it was the first target in Washington that occupies part of it and uh, major tenants and the rest of it. And again, that's, that's been successful. There is a need, and we're going to try to do more of these. Now, the, the other, in the, in the development today, what, what you're involved with uh, Fordham? No, not really. We, we're we're uh, building a law school for Fordham. That's, that's yeah, what I mean. This is our construction business. Construction side. Yeah. So we, we uh, do have a very active construction business, and uh, we are currently building a new law school for Fordham. Uh, On the campus of? At, at the Lincoln Center campus. Are they going to knock down the other? Uh, no, I think they're going to keep it for now and just have uh, use it for different uh, purposes. But uh, this building will be done in... Uh, early 2014 and uh, it'll be a dormitory over it and it's uh, I think it's gonna be a beautiful school and now on the east side you're involved right now nearly finishing up where the the Whole Foods and the yeah, school we, right we, we uh, building uh, for worldwide on on 2nd Avenue and 57th Street two new schools um, and uh, they're they are almost completed they're gonna be open in September so we well, what else is in the, the, the planning stages these days? Um, uh, in Harlem, aren't you doing something? We're, we're, well, yeah. We're going to be, my, actually, my partner is going to be doing a, uh, a small uh, uh, retail s space uh, next to the Apollo that we, we, it's going to start any moment, which at the moment our tenant is a Red Lobster, and there'll be another tenant. So it's a uh, basically basement and two floors. Small project, and we we we've also assembled a site uh, up in White Plains to uh, do additional retail with perhaps perhaps housing in, in White Plains. In White Plains. Now, a couple of years ago, you, when we were talking, you, you, you something up in Larchmont or something. Oh yeah, what happened over there? Uh, we uh, did a development on Larchmont called Carlton House uh, near the um, the train station. And uh, we, I, I thought it was going to be the best project I ever did. It was, you know, great community, a terrific building. And uh, it, it must have taken us 10 years to get the approvals. I thought working in New York was hard, but it was, the suburbs isn't that easy either. And uh, when we built it and finished it, uh, we sold a number of apartments right away. And uh, then the uh, stock market crash, I think it was 1987, um, happened and most of the buyers rescinded uh, within, their, within their time period their, their uh, deposits on purchase. And we ultimately sold it out, but it was through tough times and it uh, was not as successful as we'd hoped it would be, although I understand the resales are, are really pretty good. So in, in a similar manner, David's been with you for, what, 20 years now? Yeah, it must be. I didn't count. Yeah, it's got to be close to it. Do you, do you see the uh, the next generation of uh, pickets? Uh? You know, that, that's always hard to say. I didn't know if David was even uh, going to come in the business. Uh, he has a son who is now a uh, junior in college, and 
He's, he's worked for, uh, in the construction field one or two summers. He uh, has a job this summer in the equity end of the business and uh, not for us. And, uh, you know, it would be nice. It would be nice. You know, we, we are fourth generation, uh, which, is, which is unusual. And, uh, uh, we, you know, it would be nice to perpetuate it. Big, the biggest problem in the construction business is the city. I mean, how, how does it construct? I mean, it's you know, you know, Tishman sold out. You know, yeah. Yeah. there aren't that many private construction companies. Anymore, yeah, right. It, it's that's right. Uh, you know, in, in fact, uh, we compete against uh, the Tishmans and the Turners a, a bit, and uh, I guess it, it uh, our calling card is the fact we are privately owned and that you can really speak speak to the owners. But it's tough, you know, I, I, there, I think there probably is a trend to larger is, I don't know if it's better, but it, you know, it, 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 it enables you to have a uh, large staff and uh, larger access to capital. And um, it, it, working in the city has, is, is hard. It, uh, it's become more difficult in the last several years. And, um, but, but over the years, you know, looking at the timeline of your investments uh, and your projects, the majority over the last 20 years have really been in Manhattan. I mean, yeah, I, I think, Michael, if you go back to uh, the 70s, we did, we did an awful lot of things in, in, in Brooklyn. Brooklyn, Brooklyn. We did, you know, in the 60s, an awful lot of things in the Bronx. Uh, we even did a couple of things in the island. But, uh, yeah, I would say that in the last... Um, the only thing I can remember in the last several years is a hotel we did out in Queens a couple of years back. And uh, it's probably something remember. else. Huh? Did you build the hotel? We, we did a... Um, we had done a uh, Crown Plaza at the airport at LaGuardia, and, and then our client wanted to add a uh, Hampton Inn, which we, again, I guess we finished a couple of years ago at the most. So, uh... That's not down on the timeline. It's not on the timeline. No, no, it's not down on the timeline. Uh, grandchildren. Yes, sir. How many? Six. And their names, you know, you got... Yeah, I do. It's, it's, uh, Matthew, Nicole, Ben, Katie, Abby, and, and um, Ethan. So when you were going to, uh, NYU for business for your yes. master's over there, did you ever think you'd, uh, I mean... This happened because you, you, your dad passed on, and you know. Yeah. Did you ever think you'd be in this business today, if if you had to look at it going back? No, I, I when when I was going to school at night, I think my sense was I wasn't going into the business, and then uh, uh, circumstances forced me into it, and I just found uh, it, it was like something different every day. You know, it, it it's a very interesting business. There's uh, you know. It's really unique in the sense that you're not doing the same thing. You have different kind of, it's dynamic, uh, which is really why I still like the, the construction business. And, uh, it, you know, a, a part of it is that it that is dynamic and you, you have something going on every single day that you got to be on top of. And, uh, of course, as the years gone, have gone by, it makes it a little bit more difficult also because it is such a, such a focused type of business. You've got to pay attention to the details. And I'd like to say you, you as, as the show originally was called Building New York, now New York Life Stories, you've truly been a builder of New York. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much. Pleasure.